my vision of the future is that we're preparing kids for 21st century success by bringing tools into the classroom like video games and engage them at the level they're used to being engaged outside of the classroom and that we're cont continuously assessing them in real world, real life experiences. The conventional education system is the same system we've been using for hundreds of years and hasn't adapted to the new technology that we have at our disposal. Our focus is really around how do we understand how to use games for both engaging kids and assessing them in a way that just hasn't been done before. What we find through gameplay is that you have a huge amount of gameplay data that you just don't have access to in a traditional assessment. And when you access that gameplay data and make inferences around the competency and skills of these kids, the future is endless in what we can achieve. And I think when you look at the gameplay that's happening with teachers playing games on their mobile phones and just the whole impact of games becoming part of our mainstream society, it's much easier now for everyone to ima imagine games at home in the classroom. So one example is the new SimCity game that we're working on. So we've actually taken the, the new game that came out from Electronic Arts, which is the world leading simulation game on how to actually simulate a city and live in a city. We've taken that code base and created an educational version of that game. And as kids are playing that game, they're being assessed in next generation science standards of systems thinking, human impact on the environment, and some of the English language art standards. So game-based assessment means that actually within the gameplay, you're assessing how the player is doing. When you think of games, they are already a series of choices and a series of assessments around how a player is doing. You can't move to the next level unless you've learned what you, you are supposed to learn from the game and that we've assessed what you've learned from the game and you're able to move on to the next level. So if you're a kid in a classroom, you're pre presented with this scenario, which tells you that you have a major pollution, pollution problem in your city. And you've got to do what many mayors have to do, which is how do you lower that pollution while maintaining economic job growth. Most of our kids, when they first are faced with that challenge, end up turning off the power plants or bulldozing the power plants. And ultimately, the power goes out right away and they've failed. So they realize very quickly that in order to lower that pollution, they've got to manage that pollution while rezoning for different job areas and different job growth opportunities. And that really is at the essence of systems thinking and systems modeling, which is what we're trying to teach. So you actually create the road infrastructure, you select where the buildings go, what the zoning opportunities are for commercial industrial zoning, and then you're able to actually determine where the power plants go, how you power your city. And the city, frankly, takes on a life of its own as you continue to manage and grow it. When we look at the big picture of education globally, we're really not at a point where we're preparing our kids for 21st century success. They've got jobs 20, 30 years from now that we can't even predict. And these are skills that we've got to cultivate with the right technology and the right innovation that we have right now at their disposal and bring it into the classroom. We want kids to be uh, just as excited about learning and doing exams as they are about the next video game that comes out.